Hi, it's Drew at Finale Fireworks. In this highlights video, I'm going to show you two of the best features that we just released in the latest version of Finale 3D. Let's jump right in. In previous versions of Finale, you could add background images as sky images or background images as ground images, uh, but you could not add a two-dimensional image as a background or backdrop image uh, to the 3D scene. So, Without further delay, we've got that added, and you can do that by going to Scenery, Background Images, Set Backdrop Image, that's the feature that you want, and then Add Image. Here I'm going to go to my Backdrop Images folder and grab a photo of a fireworks shoot site. Now, the image looks a little bit strange right now because it's just suspended in the 3D view, but just by clicking Enter, you can get a really good result. So the, uh, all the parameters are automatically calculated for you. And then I can just click yes to put the view in the standard aspect ratio. This is definitely something you want to do, especially if you're planning to make a video of the show after you finish the design. So this looks pretty good already. Everything's in frame and I could start designing my show, but I'd like to make some changes. So to do that, I'll go to scenery and backdrop image adjustments. Now this brings up the same dialogue we had when we first brought him in the, in the image. But now we can see uh, the image a little bit better and make some of those adjustments. All right, so what I'd like to change is first the percentage of the image that's underground. Uh, the reason being that I'd like to have a little bit more sky available and I don't need as much of the grass. So I'd like to basically shift the whole image down. So that's where a fraction of uh, image billboard underground comes in. I'm just gonna turn this up to 35 for 35%. And I'm going to change the fraction of image under horizon to 35% to match. Now, the only other thing I'd like to do is to darken the image up to give the impression of night. The awesome thing about Finale 3D is you can do this without the need for Photoshop or another third party uh, image editing software. We can do that right here. So I'll just go ahead and crank this to 70% darkness and then maybe uh, 75 here at the horizon and then maybe uh, 75 here in the ground as well. So I'm going to go with a uh, little bit lighter in the sky and then a little bit darker at the horizon on the ground. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so that's looking really nice. So you can see uh, we have a little bit more sky area here for our fireworks. We've got less grass down here and we've got that nighttime effect going on the image. So to get the full effect, let's just quickly arrange the firing positions and add a couple effects so we can create a scene. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go and add a few more positions. I'm gonna actually add seven positions. And now that my positions are unlocked, I'm gonna go ahead and drag position 16 over here to the side. And then I'm gonna select my 15 positions here. I wanna turn these into a line and I wanna put them up here on the water where I'm planning to shoot from. So I'm gonna right click on those positions. And the first thing I'm gonna do is move them back away from the camera. So they're all at a consistent distance of 50 meters back. And then I'm going to just going to start to raise them up into position. And now they're a bit messy, but we'll clean that up by going to positions, arranging a pattern into a line. And then I know the width of my shoot site is 765 feet. So I'll just enter that there. And there we go. So now I can just grab those all together and put them in a good spot. Now remember position 16, we set off to the side. That's going to be a shell position. We'd like that to be further away. So I'll right click on this guy and come in, adjust the distance away from the origin, push him back further into the scene uh, of 100 meters. And with them, with that all set, I'll just drag him up here into the middle into a good spot. All right, now with my positions just as I'd like them, I'll go ahead and lock it down by clicking the gold lock. So let's go ahead and add some effects. So first I'll select my positions here in the row and let's add some yellow comets. So there's a set of yellow comets. I'll go ahead and duplicate this by holding control. And let's do some cool fans. So for these guys, I hit F to fan. And we'll just spread these outward. Looks good. Fan these other guys. Again, F on the keyboard, 120 degrees. And let's point these guys inward. Finally, let's add a flight of shells. And so let's look at what we got here for, maybe let's say four inch shells. So we'll add this guy, and then I'm going to shift F on my keyboard, duplicate into a flight. So we'll have a flight of three shells at the same time, 20 degree angles between, and there we go. So that's what we got. 
So we've got the fan of comets going out, fan of comets going in, and then uh, the flight of shells. Now, the next feature that I'd like to show you, I've, I've also got another demo of a background image, so stay tuned for that, but I wanted to show you a really cool feature that we added while I have some effects here in my timeline, and that is this little handle that you will see if you select more than one effect or more than one event. A little handle appears down here that allows you to stretch or compress the duration of uh, sequence. So uh, you do have the options here in the script menu, sequences spread out evenly or make into sequence. But now you can, if you have a very simple sequence or you just made to make a fine adjustment, you can grab there and you can adjust the duration of anything selected. So we'll go ahead and spread this guy out and I'll go ahead and do the same thing for this second set of events here. And then we'll just go ahead and bring these in a little bit and let's play it back one time to see how it looks. All right, that's really nice. It's, it's very convincing. Um, but what I'd like to do is speed it up a little bit. So even though we adjusted those durations separately, now if we'd like, we can select all the items and the handle appears on the right hand side and I can just drag this in to speed up this entire segment. So maybe I'm doing this because the segment of the music is a little bit faster, or maybe I'm just going for a specific look. All right, perfect. Now, before we adjourn, let's take it up one more level with another example of backdrop images. So in this case, I used a backdrop image and it's entirely behind the scene. So all of the fireworks and all the positions are in front of the scene. Let's do another example where we're doing something a bit different. So for this example, I'm gonna put in an image that has some transparency. So we'll again, repeat scenery, background images, set backdrop image, add image, go to our backdrop images folder. And here's an image that I downloaded from Google Images, and it's just of a castle, and it has some built-in transparency. This is key in this demo because I'm going to shoot some fireworks in front of the castle, but I'm also going to shoot some fireworks behind the castle, and I want to see those fireworks in the sky around the castle, so the transparency is key. So you can find images like this online, but if you don't have an image with transparency, you can even specify a color that you'd like to be shown as transparent here in Finale 3D. So I'll go ahead and click enter and we'll see if we get a good result. So uh, we're not getting a very good result because we'd like to see the whole castle and kind of right front and center. So this one's gonna take some more adjustment. So to do those adjustments, we'll go back to scenery, backdrop image adjustments, and we'll start doing some tweaking. First thing that we we'll wanna do is adjust the percentage of the image that's underground. So I don't want a quarter of the image to be below the ground level or below the grass level. So I'll just change that to one. So it's just tucked underground. And I'm gonna leave the ground on for this example. So I'm gonna say, turn off ground is currently enabled. I'm gonna disable that. The next thing I wanna do is adjust the width and the distance of the image. So I want the castle to be very much front and center. So I'm gonna shrink the width down to 125 meters. The width of the billboard is the same thing as saying the width of the castle or the width of the image. And then the distance from the camera viewpoint or the distance from the origin in this case is going to be just 10 meters. So I'm gonna put it very close. The next thing I'd like to do is I'll just change the lean. So because of the camera position, the castle is, the image is currently being leaned toward the camera. I'm just gonna make that zero in this example. You can play with that as needed based on, on what you're doing. Finally, I see that the castle's really bright, so let's just darken up a little bit at the top, at the horizon, at the bottom, 25% darkness, and there we go. So now you can see there's our image, and it's looking really good. Now to get an idea of what we're actually got here in 3D space, I can click the orbit button, and we can look around, and you can see there's our flat image in 3D space. So it gives you, from the front view, you get that impression that there's a model there, but there's not. And the reason this is very cool is because you don't have to have a 3D model to do a very convincing uh, show using an image like this. So just with a 2D image, you can do a very impressive rendering. Even better, this is a hobbyist feature, so you don't need the pro version of Finale 3D, which you would need if you were planning to use models. To give you the full effect, we'll go ahead and arrange some firing positions and shoot a few effects. So. 
Remember when we did the adjustments under scenery, set backdrop image adjustments, that our distance from the origin for the billboard is only 10 meters. So that's important to know when you're adjusting your firing positions. So if we want to put firing positions behind the castle, they need to be more than 10 meters back. So go ahead and right click on this row of positions and we'll move these guys back to 50 meters back from the origin. There we go, so now those are behind. We'll go ahead and add four more positions. And here we go. And we're gonna have those in front. So we're gonna go ahead and edit there. And remember our image is at 10 meters back. So we're gonna go ahead and do five. So those will just be kind of floating in front a little bit. So there's our four positions. And now I'll just go ahead and adjust their heights and the left and right to get them aligned with parts of the castle that I'd like to shoot from. So there's number three. And then finally over here, the fourth position there. So if we go ahead and orbit around a little bit, you can see how this is taking shape. So there you can see behind the castle, we have our row of positions for shells, and then in front for our close proximity items, here's our four positions here. Now, we've a little bit disoriented, uh, but to get back to the best viewpoint, just click on the front camera preset. And then since we're done with our positions, we'll just go ahead and click the gold lock to lock those down. So let's go ahead and put in some effects. So let's add some single shot comets. And for this time, I'll just go with something green. Here we've got some green comets. Again, we'll do shift F to make some flights, flights of seven, angle between 10 degrees, and boom, there we go. So let's take a look at that. So it looks really nice. And you can see all of those comets in front of the castle. So now let's add some shells. Uh, so we'll select the positions. Now, even though those positions are behind the castle, I can still select them from here. And for this one, we'll go with some dahlias. So I'll just add some gold to purple dahlias. And let's fan those out a little bit. 40 degrees looks good and very nice. So let's take a look at those and see how those dahlias are appearing behind the castle. So one last time, we'll demonstrate that other new feature which is this little handle here to make a sequence. So I'll just drag this out and we'll turn our mass launch of comets into a really quick sequence here and then follow that by a flight of shells from behind the castle. So let's play that through one time. All right, that looks awesome. So I hope this uh, video has been inspirational for you. You can see some of the things that you can do with backdrop images, and that will give you some new tools to use for your shows and for your renderings. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching. Be sure to check out all the other great videos in our YouTube channel, and if you'd like to be notified about new videos as they come out, don't forget to subscribe.